Hi, Mark Rothfield from Club Marine TV, and welcome aboard the brand new 78 motor yacht from Riviera. She's the largest model that Riviera has ever built, and possibly the biggest and most sophisticated production vessel ever built in Australia. Is she also the best? Well, let's take a look. This foredeck area is one of many entertainment zones. Great place to sit when you're having cocktails at sunset. You can store your rib or your tender up here, launching with this davit. There's also really great storage all around for your fenders and easy access off the boat. So you're not actually climbing over the cushions to get to this seating area. Who needs a sports cockpit when you have a boarding platform as large as this? It works in three steps. So you have the largest panel aft, goes down, and then you have these two smaller panels forming steps. So you have a grand stairwell into the water. This opens to the garage where you can store your water toys. This hatch here leads to the engine room. This fully enclosed cockpit really defines the motor yacht concept and separates it from the sports motor yacht sister ships. It makes no pretenses about being a fishing boat. It just gets straight down to the business of relaxation and entertainment. When I first saw the artist impressions of this, it looked a little bit blocky, but seeing it in the flesh for the first time, it is actually far more open and stylish than you think. Now that's the work of an Italian designer called Luca Vallabona, who worked with Riv for the first time. He's from the super yacht, mega yacht world, and you can just see those touches, that design flair coming through this area. There's a really nice wet bar here with a two burner grill, a fridge, freezers, everything you need. And for such a large boat, there's this really intimate flow through into the main saloon. You enter this saloon area, straight away you get this new car smell. You're sort of assailed with the fragrance of opulence when you're in here. Moving in, the galley is located aft where I really like it. It's on the starboard side as well. It's the linchpin of the entertainment. Lots of refrigeration at the right height. So you have it on the starboard as well as the port side. Again, lots of features from home as well. Not one, but two ovens, a cooktop, dishwasher, great storage, twin sink, everything you're going to need for passage making. And best of all, you can serve straight out through this window, which on the motor yacht actually lowers rather than hinges out like it does on other vessels. They call this the Grand Lounge and you can see why. It's so spacious and you also have views of the water everywhere you look, really impressive. You can have it with a dinette table. If you want formal dining, that goes to port, but I really like this as just one big social area. It's also served by its own bar, and you have a TV that can drop down from the ceiling. There's also a pantograph door that leads to the side deck. Now, to get down to the accommodation deck, there's this sweeping stairwell, really classy, and it brings so much light into the atrium. The master cabin is aft, so let's take a look. You have a king size bed that can actually electrically adjust into different posture positions. It occupies the full six metre beam, so you have these hull windows either side. Naturally, it's air conditioned. You can also open these port side windows if you want some flow through ventilation. Other things to consider it has a walk in robe. Its ensuite is to port. Inside the ensuite, you find this extended vanity with his and her sinks, the walk in shower and a toilet compartment that has its own sliding door for privacy. The VIP cabins in the V, you get a queen size island berth. Those large hull windows bring forward so you also get views. Little touches, everything is flush fitting. It's a European sort of luxury that's come with this motor yacht and it also has an ensuite. There are two other guest cabins. The port state room has the option of a double bed or you can have twin beds that slide together and there's ensuite access to the day head. The starboard stateroom has two single crossover berths and it's a really generous size. This is the crew cab. You come down a stairwell on the port side of the boat. You find a single bed. You can also have a bunk if there are two crew. It has its own ensuite, as well as a laundry that includes a fold out ironing board. Rib offers an enclosed and an open bridge version, but the tribe is speaking, all the 11 orders so far have opted for the enclosed bridge. And why wouldn't you? It gives you the best of both worlds. You can open the windows and you can open the sunroof and you get that natural flow through. You can even open the rear doors. So one of the features of motor yachts is that you get this long overhanging deck. So not only does it give you 
protection below. You get all this extra living space upstairs. Well, at the helm of a 78 footer, but you actually have a great view forwards and, and outside. So really isn't as intimidating as you think it might be. The game changer here has been the joystick where you get this fingertip control at low speed. And really it's no more difficult than any other vessel to steer. If you've come from other ribs or whatever, you will be able to manage it. I've seen this boat berth in some really tight spaces. So if you know what you're doing and you use the tools at your disposal, it won't be intimidating. The helm station is straight from the super yacht manual. You've got four 24 inch Garmin screens. You have three forward facing seats that can adjust electrically. Being on the centre line, the helm gives you a really great view over the boat. So I've just nudged into gear now. We're doing about 650 revs, but that's seeing over seven knots. We do have about 15 knots of wind with us too. Um, fuel flow is about 13 litres per side at the moment, which is pretty good. Engine load just 39%. Doing a thousand revs now, fuel flow has increased to about 47 per side, uh, doing about 10 knots. This would be a really good offshore speed if you're going long distances and you're conscious of your fuel. The boat carries around 10,000 litres and that will take you long distances in blue water mode. It's just so responsive on these throttles. This boat relies on Humphrey tabs and fins instead of a gyro, which is interesting. Those fins work automatically and they, they're even good at low speed, surprisingly even at anchor, where they just adjust to the flow, automated, and you really don't have to worry about it. And they stop the heel just like a gyro does. You don't have the weight, you don't have the surfacing requirements, you don't have even the space that they take up. So definitely worth considering as an option. Okay, let's see what you can do. A bit more throttle. 2,000 revs now. The fuel usage is jumping up. We're doing 27, 28 knots. Just has no transition to plane. Really impressive. That's now around about 80%. I'd say that's a good cruise speed there. Using 330 litres per hour, which, which is high, but again, within the realms of this kind of boat. That would make about 670 litres total fuel flow, which is in keeping with a boat of this size. Okay, we're at full throttle now. Using 780 litres per hour, I look down at the GPS speed, 33 and a half knots, which is amazing when you weigh 56 tonnes. What you notice is how well it turns. Those tabs keep everything nice and flat and they also look after the trim. So again, this boat is no harder to drive than any other Riviera. Well, here's the reason for that 34 knot performance. Twin V12, 2000 horsepower man diesels. They should be in the Australian Museum next to Farlap's Heart or even an art gallery. They are absolutely beautiful. They run really quietly. A motor yacht of this size runs two generators. Other thing you notice, the exhausts all lead aft and underwater for nice quiet operation and full headroom. So you don't just get quantity, you get quality. So with me on this very comfortable lounge actually is Stephen Milne who's the Director of Brand and Communications at Riviera, and you oversaw that incredible launch the other night. Tell us about the backstory to, to get to this point. What's it entailed from your point of view? This has been over three years in development, this yacht, and uh, over 76,000 man hours in designing and developing it and getting the boat complete. Now, that doesn't include the build time for the first boat, but uh, uh, Riviera has always been a very strong listener of our clients' desires and wishes. And this is the sum total of what many have, uh, have said to us that they want to do. They want to cruise further afield, they need greater accommodation, and they want a boat that's a highly capable motor yacht. See, your logo has sprouted some wings. Those wings are only available on the, uh, on the motor yacht. And what we wanted to do was, it's all about allowing our boat owners' dreams to soar, just like a sea eagle. And so those wings indicate that this is a boat that's capable of transporting our owners to wherever they want to go, anywhere in the world. So to sum up the 78 motor yacht, 
Riviera has built the ultimate 10th anniversary present for owner Rodney Longhurst. But this is 42 years of design knowledge distilled into one great package, combined with the Italian influence of Luca Vellabona. At the moment, it'll set you back from $6.6 million. However, you would say it is price on application. It will enhance your life immeasurably. Is it the best built Australian boat ever? Well, ever is a long time, but I would say yes, definitely. I'm Mark Rothfeld for Club Marine TV. Off to buy a lotto ticket. See you next time.